Good morning. How is everybody today? All right, we are here for Make It Digital Handy Tools and Tricks. Let me look at my chat and make sure we're not starting with any questions. All right. All right, so everybody has been asking, of course, how to make their content digital. So I thought I would share some tools that I use almost daily for making content digital, any kind of content. So I hope you get some good ideas from today. All right, so raise your hand and y'all can do this through your little um, emojis. If you remember the snipping tool, the window snipping tool, I used it years ago. It's a handy little tool. Well, the snipping tool has gone through an upgrade. So um, Windows has kind of enhanced some of the tools on that snipping tool. So that's what we're gonna start with today. So let me exit out of my slideshow here. And I am going to stop my video, get that going. All right, so I'm going to go to just um, National Geographic website. So the snipping tool, as you know, makes things up an image. So you can almost get an image from anywhere using the snipping tool. So I'm just going to do a short little demo of the snipping tool and the new features that um, Windows has added to that. So I'm on. Um, National Geographic. And so on most websites, guys, you know, when you want a picture, you just right click and you can save it as an image. Well, look at National Geographic, okay? They're not letting you get any of their images because they want, because of copyright. And we all know that copyright is a real thing and that if we're getting stuff off the web, we need to say where we're getting it from. So this is where the snipping tool comes in handy, okay? I have the snipping tool on my taskbar at the bottom. And you can do that. So let me show you how you find the snipping tool. On Windows 10, there's this handy little search box. Okay. You can click the window to see your start menu. Okay. But my snipping tool is not there. So if I just come in my little search box and I do snip, it's going to find the snipping tool. So Windows 10 search, if you're looking for something on your men Windows menu, use the search box. <clears throat> so then I can come up to my little snipping tool and I can right click on it. And I can say, it's gonna give you two options for pinning it. You can pin it to your taskbar, which is where mine is, or you can pin it to the start, start menu, okay? So that's just how you can make things a little bit handier to get to. All right, so mine is on my taskbar, so I'm going to go open it up. Let me dra drag this over. All right, so when you click your snipping tool, this is what it does. I'm doing a new snip, and it's turned my cursor into those little crosshairs. So I can then just come click and drag. Wait a minute, let me get rid of that. Do you want to? No. There we go. I'm going to do a new snip. Now this is Pluto and the article is about Dune. So say I'm teaching um, about the planet. So I want this snip from Pl Pluto that's showing and talking about these dunes. But I need to add a little bit here because my kids don't really know, you know, what, what's a dune? All I'm seeing is a, you know, this, this image of Pluto, not, surely, not sure what they're talking about. So you could go up to tools. That's, that's the tools that we used to use years ago with Windows Snipping Tool. That's all we had. You had some pens and you had some highlighters and you had your eraser. But now we've got this cool little rainbow teardrop and it says edit with paint 3D, okay? So I'm gonna click that. 
and it's going to open up my snip in a whole window of paint. So you can see in this, I have a lot more options that I can use. So up at the top right now, I'm on brushes. And you can see I've got this whole gallery of markers and paint brushes to use. If anybody remembers the um, Smart Notebook floating toolbar, this reminds me a lot of that, okay? So right now I'm on marker. So if I wanted to show one of the dunes, I could just circle it. All right, but y'all see I'm not real good using a mouse to draw. I really don't like that. Right up at the top, there's my little undo. <clears throat> I'm gonna undo that. Do not use your eraser because it will erase the picture and I'll show you that in just a minute. I can go up to my 2D shapes. I can choose the circle. I can click and drag and put a perfect circle over the dunes if that's what I want to do. Once I create my circle, then I can go change the color of it. I can make it not a, uh, it's gonna be a solid line. Let's see what else they got. You've got some fill options if you wanna fill the shapes. You've got some thickness options here. You've got the opacity, if you want it to be see-through or not see-through. So you've got all kinds of choices. You can either rotate it or flip it, whatever you need to do, okay? So that's one way to annotate on your picture using the 2D shapes. But I'm gonna go back to the brushes and I'm just gonna show you a sample of each one. So this is the marker, okay? Looks like a Sharpie. This is the calligraphy pen, okay? Makes those cool calligraphy lines. You've got an oil brush. You've got some watercolor. This is just a real thin pen. You've got your pencil. You've got an eraser, but it's going to erase the picture, guys. So if you ever do that by mistake, remember your friend is undo. And you can undo unlimited amounts of times. Okay. And then they give you the crayon option, which we love. They give you the spray can option. And then they give you the bucket that you can fill the whole screen with color if you want to. Down here at the bottom are all the different colors you can choose from. And then if you want to do matte gloss, dull metal, polished metal. I mean, they have, this is the Mac Daddy of snipping tools here. Okay. And it comes with Windows 10. So you have it. So you have your image. You've got all these other choices. They give you some stickers. Okay. You know, we love our emojis. There's no sun in space, but you could add a sun if you wanted to. Um, remember, undo takes your stickers off. You got a whole little slew of stickers to work with. You've got some backgrounds to choose from. You can put a text box. So here's my text box. I'm going to click and drag. And then I can write. That's kind of big. So I'm going to change my font size and say we're talking about dunes. Let's see if I spelled that right. I can change the color. I can move it around to where I want it to go. All those um, text tools when you're using the text. You've got effects. What's a photo without effect options? It just adds a little color. No biggie, no biggie there. But remember, if you don't like the effect, you're gonna undo. You also have a redo if you undo too many times. Um, you've got a 3D library, a whole slew of options there. And then let's see, you've got paste. So if you've copied something and you want to come in here and paste it, there's your paste tool. There's your undo. You can see your history and then you've got your redo tool. 
All right, so I have annotated my image and now I need to save it, okay? You go into this little folder all the way at the top left corner and that gives you um, some options there. You can save it or you can save as. I always save as so that I can tell it exactly where I want it to save, okay? So I'm gonna do save as. I wanna save it as an image. Oop, here it comes. And then I'm gonna save it to my Google Drive. In my drive, I have a folder for SNPs. If I was creating an, if I was creating a SNP for a unit, I would put in a folder for that unit. Okay, so you need to start thinking about how you're organizing stuff in your drive. Because you have to be able to go back and find it when you want to use it. So for my purposes today, I'm putting it in my SNPs folder. And I'm just going to call it Dunes of Pluto. Giving it a name and I'm saving it. Now, the great thing I like about saving to um, Drive is that now I could immediately go and open up a slide, a Google slide, and say insert from Google Drive, and that SNP's going to be the first one it shows me because it always defaults to your recent images in your Drive. All right, that was, that was Fast and Furious for the um, newly upgraded snipping tool. Do we have any questions about that? Could you go over again, I'm sorry, somebody was talking to me, the part about going into Windows. I missed that one little part. Saving it? No, what did you go into when you clicked on the Windows? Oh, that's where I went to search for my snipping tool. So oh, okay. the window, this, this opens your start menu. Mm -hmm. So anything that's installed on your computer, this is the menu for, for those installed programs. Notice my snipping tool wasn't viewing, so I went right down here and searched snip, and it'll show you anything you're looking for in your computer that you search for using the search box for Windows. Right, I have it on my toolbar, so I just missed that part. I didn't know what it yeah. was about. Yeah, and Zena, that those that is a question that we're getting in chat. This is Christy. Um, this is Windows 10. So some people are on Mac, some people are on Chromebooks, and they're asking if this is available on different devices. This is or Windows is this 10. Just a Windows 10. Windows 10 snipping tool. That is correct. It is Windows 10. All right, so no more questions about the snipping tool. Get it to your taskbar or your start menu um, so that it's easy to get to and start using it and playing with it. It's very useful. Then you've got anything you need as an image and you can pop it into a Google Doc, you can pop it into a Google Slide, you can um, add it directly as an own course assignment, um, whatever you need to do with it. Okay, so let me get back to my, all right, so I know I've got some Mac users out there. I am a Mac user at home. This um, wonderful snipping tool is not available for Mac. It is Windows 10. So in the slideshow that I am going to link with this video, um, I, I put some help out there for my Mac users, okay? Because Mac does have a screenshot feature on it. So I have two slides for my Mac users on how you can annotate your, um, your screenshots on your Mac. So you do have those tools available on a Mac. All right. You can, I'm looking at Shannon's, um, you cannot edit or add stuff on a Mac, just snip and paste. You can snip and annotate. So there are some annotation tools. Check out this slideshow when we're done, Shannon. Um, and you have some options there for, um, 
And it may depend on your version of the iOS you're want it running on your Mac. So just check that out. All right, audio recordings. So for our kids that may be at home trying to do stuff or these kids that, are, that may choose to be the full or the blended virtual students, sometimes you just wanna tell them something with your voice, okay? So there is a way that um, you can make just an audio file, okay? Today I'm gonna to be showing you the Windows 10 voice recorder. There's one built in Windows 10. And I'm gonna show you um, one online voice recorder, but I'm giving you two options here in this slideshow, okay? All right, so let's take a look at the online voice recorder first. The URL is online-voice-recorder.com. It's very easy to use, but guys, anytime you're using online tools like this, there's other stuff going on the screen where they're trying to draw you in in order to get you to pay for something, okay? So just remember that anytime you're using these little tools and stay focused on what it is you're trying to do. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click my little recorder here. Now guys, you, you have to have a microphone on the device you're using. So if you're using a computer, make sure your microphone's working. So I'm gonna click my microphone. I'm going, I have to allow it. So I'm gonna click allow. And so now it is recording my voice, okay? I can see my little timer here for how long my recording is. I'm gonna let it get to about 15 seconds and then I'm gonna click stop. Notice there is a pause button. So if you need to pause to gather your thoughts, you could pause it and keep going. I'm gonna stop. Here's my little play button. And so now it is recording my voice. I don't know that you can hear that recording because I'm not sharing my computer. Can y'all hear that recording? Okay, perfect. Okay, I can see my little timer here for how long my recording. Okay, so there's my recording. And then here's my save button. So I'm clicking save. It has downloaded it to my computer. Anytime something is downloaded, it's in your downloads folder. But I can click my little down pointing arrow and I can say, show this to me in the folder that it's in. So here's my recording. I'm gonna immediately rename it. And then I could immediately go put it in a folder that I needed it to be saved in so that I know where it is and I can go back and find it. Once you have that audio recording, you can um, add it to a Google slide. If it's in your Google Drive, guys, it, everything in your drive gives you a link. So you could add this link in an own course assignment. You could add the link in a uh, Google Doc. Okay, so once you have your recording and it's in your Google Drive, it can be put anywhere. It can be put on your website, okay? So that's just a basic how you make a recording from an online recorder. Questions about this online tool? Now I'm not showing you this today, but just notice I'm here at this online recorder and there are some other pretty cool stuff here. I've played with some of these. They've got some PDF tools. I'm gonna talk to, I'm gonna give you a couple of those a little bit later. There's also a video recorder. This is an online video recorder. If you've got a webcam at home, you can come here and record a video of yourself. Okay, so some other options at this online voice recorder.com. All right, so let's go back. All right, the next one I wanna show you is the Windows 10 voice recorder because there is one built into Windows 10. So again, I'm coming down here and I'm gonna type in voice recorder. Just start typing and it starts finding it for me. So there's my voice recorder. Again, if I wanted to pin it to my start menu or my taskbar, I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna pin this one to my start menu. 
So anytime I press my Windows Low icon, I can see my voice recorder app. Here's my voice recorder. Here's my microphone. So now my voice recorder is recording my voice. I am going to click this button to now stop the recording. Here is my recording. So now my voice recorder is recording my voice. And then I've got some options down here. I can share it. If I need to trim it a little bit, I can trim it. I can trash it and start over. So when I click share, um, that's not what I wanna show you, hold on. I just wanna save it to my computer, where is it? Open file location. All right, so look where it's saving it because it automatically saves it in the voice recording folder, okay? So it's gonna be in your documents, which means guys, it's on that computer, not a safe zone. So then I would come in here. I am going to rename it. And then I would save it in a folder where I know that it lives. So I could just drag it, drag it right here and drop it on my Google file stream. Why isn't that a valid location? Or I could copy or cut and paste it. My drive. I'm just gonna do it in my snips for now. Paste it. So, Always, always file your stuff where you can find it later, okay? Don't let it live on your computer and don't let it live in downloads. Because downloads goes away after 30 days. I didn't know that, but apparently it does. So just, that's just, that's my um, public, public service announcement for today. Downloads goes away after 30 days. All right, questions about making an audio recording. I also added Vocaroo. Vocaroo's been around a long time. It works much like my, the online voice recorder does. All right, so let's go, let's see what we're doing next. All right, uh, YouTube. Y'all know YouTube is blocked for students in our, um, in our network. So um, I wanted to give you some alternatives for YouTube, if you are not familiar with any video converter, it is awesome for getting um, videos off of YouTube, okay? Again, if you're stealing a video from YouTube and you did not create that video, always give credit to the original owner of the video, okay? Um, Cassie, use onlinevoicerecorder.com. I have not seen anything on a Mac that's built in for audio recording. All right, so let's look at any video converter. All right, that is an installed program, guys, so you will have to, um, you will have to download it to your computer. And it's a free download, by the way. Did it open? Here it comes. No, I don't want to install that. All right, so here's any video converter. All right, so let me go out to YouTube. Go away. All right, so um, let's go to ditch that textbook. I like that guy. All right, so um, here's a video on Buncee. I'm just grabbing one, guys. All right, and I'm gonna get the URL for this YouTube video. 
So I'm just going to copy it. And I'm going back to my any video converter. And you see the tab that says add URLs. You're going to add the add your URL. Okay, I did the plus sign, I added my URL. There it is. And I'm going to say convert now. And it starts doing its thing. So notice how um, he does a good job of kind of um, advertising on his YouTube videos. So since this is his YouTube video, I would leave his little beginning slide that shows his name and, 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 and that he's the owner of this video. That would satisfy your copyright issues here. If not, wherever you're embedding the video or putting the video, you could just say video um, was created by and put whoever created the video's name. So any video converter, y'all, if you do a Google search for it, I'm going to show you once we're finished here how you can find that download. All right, so it has, it has converted it for me. Mm. That's fine. Go away. Oop. Come back. All right, so over here is kind of where it's putting it. When you install any video converter, it installs a folder for you where it puts everything unless you come here and change it. Okay, I didn't change it. So this is where it's living. And I'm actually going to do that again so I can show you how that works. So I'm doing add URL. I'm going to add it here. Paste it. I'm going to get it in there. I'm clicking on it and then I'm going to say, this is where I want you to save it. And I'm just going to see if it'll save it to my desktop for now. Because again, you want to be able to find it. If you can't find it, you're going to have to go to your C drive, go to users, and I believe it probably put it because our tech, he's not, it's not going to let me get it because our tech installed it, it put it in, in that folder. Let me see, videos, there it is, any video converter. So just be, be mindful of where that video is going because you may have to dig for it once it's done. And here's my YouTube video. Then I would go move this, guys, where I need it to go so that I know where it is. Okay? Which I should have checked that before I, I, down, I downloaded it, but I didn't. So, if you do it without changing the file location, whatever computer you're on, you're going to look under C and under users. It's probably going to be under U. And then the videos folder and any video converter. If you download one and you can't find it, call me or email me. I'll, I'll remind you of the path. All right, so questions about any video converter. They will um, install this on your computer at school for you. You cannot do it. You can put in a help desk to have it installed on your computer at school. So questions about any video converter. All right, so right now I'm just in an internet window, guys, and I'm gonna type in any video converter, enter. Okay, and here's the download page. 
So just search it. You can download it at home. If you want it at school, that's a help desk. All righty. All right, the other things I have are Teacher Tube and School Tube. If you haven't heard of those, you can create a free account at either one of these sites and house your videos for your students. Once you upload to TeacherTube or SchoolTube, then you can use that link or embed code and put that video wherever you need it for students to see. These are not blocked at school. So students would be able to see these videos while at school. All right, everybody good? We've got one more thing I'm gonna show you and it's um, some PDF tools, two PDF sites that I use all the time. Okay, one is I Love PDF, the other is PDF Candy. I just like the name of those sites for some reason. Um, I do love PDFs and I also love candy, so I just like them. So let me show you what they do. I'm gonna go to PDF Candy. It does all, all this stuff, y'all. Each one of these little icons is a different thing you can do, okay? So um, you can merge PDFs, you can change a PDF to Word, but I will tell you this, it's not always perfect. So when, it, if you don't have Adobe Pro, you know, it's kind of hard to get things in the file type that you need, check out one of these sites and it may do it for you beautifully, but in some cases it may not be a perfect conversion. So you just kind of have to play with them. So if I wanted to merge some PDFs, say I had a bunch of, you know, students are going to be on Chromebooks next year, y'all. And Chromebooks have some really um, good keyboard shortcuts but not everybody knows the keyboard shortcuts. So we have a lot of um, help files for PDF, for um, keyboard shortcuts on a Chromebook. So say I wanted to, in my, in my own course classroom, in the resources, I wanted to put a bunch of keyboard shortcut help documents for my students. But I want all those documents in one PDF. So I clicked on the merge PDF icon and notice I could grab from my drive. If I use Dropbox, I can grab from there. I'm just gonna click on add files. And I know that I just downloaded these in preparation for this workshop. So I'm just going to my downloads. There's my, here's my individual help documents. It's four of them. They all kind of have the same thing, keyboard shortcuts for a Chromebook. So I'm just gonna grab all these, <clears throat> and I just did that by clicking and dragging over all of them, and I'm gonna open them. So there's my four individual files, and I'm just gonna say merge all of these files. So it's merging, it's done it. And so now, guys, this is what I'm looking for right here. I could save it directly to my drive, could save it directly to my Dropbox, or I can download it. I'm just gonna download it for now so that I can kind of show you what that looks like. So now here's my one file, my one PDF file that has all of these Chromebook shortcuts in this one file. So I could take this one PDF and put it in my resources folder in my um, own course classroom for my students to have because they're gonna be learning how to use a Chromebook come August, okay? So again, that was PDF Candy. Lots of options with PDF Candy. The other one was ilovepdf.com. Does the same thing, lots of choices. You can change a PDF to an image. If you have a great PDF, but you need it to be an image for some reason, you can do that on, on one of these sites. Um, you can change an image to a PDF. If you went and used your snipping tool to make an image, but you need it to be a PDF, you can do that at one of these sites. Um, does, it have, does it have a way to separate? Yep, split PDF. 
So if you have a PDF that has a bunch of pages in it, you can separate those pages. All right, questions. Yes, you can convert the PDFs to JPEGs or you can convert the JPEGs to PDFs, Miss Love. Either way. Thank you. Two, two of my favorite sites right here. Thanks to Christy Rokan for putting me on them a good while back. It's the best. <laughs> All right, that was, that was some good little tools for making your content digital. What questions do y'all have? What about converting them to Google Docs or Slides? Um, so if you want, you can insert a PDF into a Google Slide. You can attempt to open a PDF in Google Docs. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, depending on the PDF that you're trying to convert. But you could always convert a PDF to an image and then just put that image on your slide or in your document. Any other questions about anything I've showed you today? So in the next day or two, I'll have this video on the Copy Talk page along with this slide um, presentation so that you'll have the um, tools and, and the links to all the tools. I hope that some of these tools help you to convert your content to be digital um, because we're going to have all of those digital learners next year in our classroom. So um, just some tools to help you. Thank you all for joining today. I hope everybody has a great weekend and reach out if you need some help. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.